okay good morning okay can you see my slide can you hear me okay siapa siapa respond yes sir yes sir okay so is it full screen can you see the pointer yes sir okay okay so good morning okay so today we will start with uh, chapter 1 a okay, fundamental concept of thermal fluid okay so this is a uh, important uh, chapter because uh you will be uh understanding few terms that will be used throughout the chapter okay throughout the course okay so total you have nine chapters okay so today we will try to complete is a very short chapters uh, 23 page so we will try to complete it uh within uh today okay so that next week we will continue with the other chapters okay so as the title say okay so it's a fundamental concept okay concept asas okay temu flu temu bendalir okay so if you want to hear in uh, bahasa okay so i will go straight okay so normally my class uh, i won't wait okay so i will start sharp okay so if you are coming late uh, so you need to catch up okay by hearing the video or uh, by reading the slide okay so introduction to thermal fluid science Okay, thermal fluid science is a big, uh, big branch of mechanical. Okay, so it is under mechanical uh, engineering. Okay, so the subject that I'm teaching uh, is be uh, related to mechanical. Okay, so it's related to mechanical. So since you are a mechatronic course, okay, so you'll be learning mechanical as well as electronics. Okay, so this subject will be under the branch of uh, mechanical. Okay, so you can read here the first uh, first uh, paragraph. Okay, thermal fluid sciences. Okay, what is thermal fluid sciences? Okay, the physical sciences that deal with energy and the transfer, transport, and conversion of energy. Okay, so maybe you have uh, read in your physics during your school time. That uh, what is energy? How the energy can be created? How the energy can be converted? Okay, so the thermal fluid sciences are dealing with the energy. Okay, so what is energy? So you can see in the box. Okay, the capacity or power to do work. So if you want to do something, you need energy. Okay, if you don't have energy, so you cannot do uh, any work. Okay, so energy is the capacity or power to do work. Okay, so you can uh, apply mass. Okay, by application of mass, uh, sorry, application of uh, force. Okay, on the given mass. Okay, so you want to push or you want to pull. Okay, all that are requiring energy. Okay, so energy can be in various form. Okay, variety of forms. So it can be electrical energy. It can be mechanical energy. So electrical energy. Like how you can see in your house, you you uh, press the switch, then the light on. Okay, that is what we call as uh, electrical energy. So mechanical energy, so anything that uh, you are pushing, uh, anything that you are using any gear to uh, to do something. Okay, so all that are under the category of mechanical. So chemical, I think you know. So you put a chemical. Uh, in a certain thing then there's a reaction so and the energy is released so that is related to chemical then you have thermal okay, thermal is uh, something to do with uh, temperature okay so term term means uh, temperature okay in greek okay so anything when uh, uh, it is generated or released that's the energy transfer okay and uh, there's also a nuclear okay so nu nuclear energy is uh, something that very radical very small okay which again uh, uh, generate uh, energy okay and we know that the energy can be transformed from one form to another okay so we will uh, see today so what uh, how the energy can be converted okay and normally the energy will be measured in the amount of work done usually in joules okay so this is some introduction on the energy 
okay so under the thermal fluid sciences okay thermal fluid sciences uh, science thermobundali okay in malay okay there are three categories or three branches main branch uh, so uh, maybe this one you have heard before thermodynamic okay thermodynamic uh, adalah salah satu branch this is one of the branch then you have heat transfer okay so heat transfer and fluid mechanics okay so under this uh, subject okay for this semester we will be uh, reading or uh, try to understand uh, all the branches thermodynamics heat transfer and fluid mechanics so under the thermal fluid sciences okay so you can see an example here okay so example uh, house in a house there can be so many thermal fluid sciences applied Okay, so normally we can see uh, the solar hot water system. Uh, so normally in Malaysia we don't have solar uh, hot power. We have electrical. Okay, so water heater. Okay, uh, water heater di karuma. Okay, so we don't have a solar. So maybe in uh, overseas or other countries you can have solar. So solar it will absorb uh, energy from the sun. Okay, and it will be used to power up the Hot water tank in the house. Then you can take your shower. Okay, so you can have a uh, hot water and also cold water. Okay, so all these uh, are related to so thermodynamics. You have heat transfer. You have fluid mechanics. You have. Uh, so it's a perfect uh, classic example of thermal fluid science because it consists of all three. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, the design and analysis of most thermal system uh, such as power plant, automotive uh, engine and refrigerator. So all these are something that we are dealing with daily. Okay, something yang uh, kita gunakan setiap hari. Okay, so like automotive engine. So you are using car. So inside your car, so there's a uh, heat transfer, there's a thermodynamics involved and also fluid mechanics. Uh, so, a refrigerator, uh, seperti ice, okay, uh, in the house, so you can see behind the uh, fridge or refrigerator, you can see a lot of uh, uh, wires going in, going out, there's a lot of pipes, okay, so a lot of uh, heat transfer and thermodynamics are happening, okay. So these are the uh, examples. Okay, so an example, uh, designing a radiator of a car. Okay, so I think you have uh, heard about this word, uh, radiator kereta. Okay, car radiator. Okay, so it's uh, something that can cool your engine, can cool your car. Okay, so whenever there's a temperature, uh, so always you see there's a temperature, there's a flow of uh, water from one point to another point. Uh, so all that are uh, can be related to thermal fluid science. Okay, so you from starting from today, you start to analyze. Okay, so benda ni thermal fluid science kita. So what is the thermal fluid science behind this particular application? Uh, so uh, surrounding. Okay, keliling kita. So there, there's a lot of stuff. Try to analyze. Okay, from in your daily life, what are the things that you are dealing with thermal fluid science? Okay, because this subject is very interesting because all the things are uh, around us and uh, all the while we didn't realize, oh, this is something to do with thermal fluid science. Okay, from now, uh, from today, start to analyze everything. Okay, so okay, we in under which category this uh, application is falling? Okay, is it a uh, heat transfer? Is it a thermodynamics? Uh, is it a fluid mechanics? Okay. Uh, so the knowledge of coolant. Okay. So okay. So uh, if you see in the radiator, okay, amount of energy transfer. Uh, okay. Thermodynamic adalah an amount of energy transfer. Uh, so berkaitan dengan quantity. Okay. Quantity of the energy transfer uh, in in a coolant. Okay. Radiator. That's a coolant. Okay, so amount of energy transfer from from the coolant, uh, so it's actually related to thermodynamics. So determination of the size and shape of inner tube. Okay, so if you want to uh, transfer energy, 
a mass uh, of energy from one point to another point you requires inner tubes okay so inner tubes the size and shape so that's uh, something related to heat transfer and the determination of size and type of water pump uh, so inner tube uh, is related to coolant uh, so inside you inside the radiator you have water pump also okay related to water uh, related to fluid uh, so fluid uh, is under the fluid mechanics uh, so all this uh, a simple radiator itself uh, involving all the three branches of thermofluid science okay so this is a radiator okay so inside you can contain water uh, so you can have a fan it's a so a lot of stuff okay so application areas of thermal fluid science okay so all activities in nature uh, so as i say surrounding there's a lot of activities related to, to thermal fluid science okay, banyak banyak activity berkaitan dengan thermal fluid science Okay, so it involves the interaction between energy and matter. In matter, uh, gsim, Okay, it's uh, something that has mass and occupies volume. Okay, so it can be uh, udara, so it can be air, so it can be water or anything that has mass and also occupies volume. Okay. So it's hard to imagine an area that does not relate to thermal fluid science in some manner. So practically, you cannot avoid in your daily life, in your surrounding, uh, anything that not related to thermal fluid science. We still have something yang berkaitan dengan, dengan our surrounding. Because our surrounding yeah, really, uh, are dealing with heat, ke aba, ke are dealing with water, okay? So when there are something related to heat and water and the movement of water from one place to another place is easily connected to thermal fluid science. Okay, that's what this uh, paragraph is saying. Okay, therefore, developing a good understanding of basic principle of thermal fluid science has long been an essential part of engineering education. Okay, that's why uh, uh, why we are uh, considering this subject, this uh, branch, thermal fluid science, as the essential part of engineering education. So, meaning, if you are an engineer, especially mechatronic engineer, you cannot avoid thermal fluid science because uh, our engineering job, okay, nanti semua akan jadi engineer, jurutera. So our engineering job will be related to thermal fluid science as a mechatronic engineer, okay? Because thermal fluid science is in our surrounding, okay? So some example, okay, electric or gas range, eating and air condition, okay? So eater dengan air condition, okay, aircon, okay? So something that we use daily. Uh, so you see, uh, aircon is, uh, is related to temperature. So time you can increase the temperature, reduce the temperature, and inside uh, you are the compressor. Uh, so there's a uh, water coming in and going out. So you always can see uh, water will be coming out from the aircon. Uh, so meaning there's an energy release. Uh, so uh, and also refrigerator, fridge, uh, humidifier, which is something to hum humidify your room. Okay. Uh, increase or decrease kelembapan, okay, you mean, okay, in your room, okay, pressure cooker, okay, we always use, okay, pressure cooker in the house, okay, water heater, we always use, shower, okay, iron, iron box, okay, ada yang ada water, okay, iron, when you iron, okay, if the cloth is uh, wet, so when you iron, it become dry, uh, so, when there's a temperature difference or temperature movement, so it can be easily related with thermal fluid science. Okay, plumbing work, sprinkling, so water sprinkler, okay, the garden. Okay, even our computer, okay, is uh, related to temperature. Okay, you gunakan lama, so it become panas. Okay, our TV or uh, anything, uh, anything that involving, involving temperature and also fluid movement, 
So it can be easily under this category. Okay, all this are uh, something that we are using daily life. So if you can see large scale, the scale uh, color yang besar. Okay, so thermal fluid science play a major part in design and analysis. Okay, Ex automotive engine, rocket. Okay, rocket you see uh, temperature. So it must uh, release some uh, fi fire uh, for it to have a push. Uh, so dalam tu ada uh, minyak. So dalam tu ada uh, water. So a lot of stuff. So rocket, jet engine, uh, so nuclear power plant. The solar collectors, so transportation of water from one town to another town. Okay, crude oil, okay, minyak, minyak mentah. Okay, natural gas. Okay, so macam mana dari, uh, okay, tengah-tengah laut uh, can be passed to the main ground. Uh, so you use the underground pipe. Uh, so all that are involving thermal fluid science. So water distribution system in cities. Okay, so, uh, so macam mana logi, dari logi air, water can be transferred to your house. Okay, and design of vehicle from ordinary cars to aeroplane. Uh, so benda-benda yang ada dekat atas ni pun, we cannot avoid. And benda-benda yang besar ni pun, we cannot avoid. So it sh clearly shows that thermal fluid science are involved in your daily life. Okay, so that's the important stuff. Okay, so you can see some pictures okay, uh, of the application. Okay, refrigerator, boots. Okay, boot pun, uh, you have a fluid mechanics. You're moving from one place to another place. And you will, uh, like, like kapal layar. Okay, yeah, uh, you can uh, have uh, wind to move the yak. Okay, so uh, you have uh, boots. Okay, you have uh, aircraft, spacecraft. Okay, then power plant, even your human body are dealing with temperature and fluid. So, dalam uh, badan you are the water as well as uh, blood. And you have a temperature, body temperature. Uh, so, if, uh, if uh, like uh, budak kecil, uh, kalau badan terlalu panas, so they normally will say uh, you need to pour cold water. Uh, you can tuam dengan air sejuk. Uh, if like uh, our adult body, we normally do them with uh, air, uh, apa, kain yang panas, okay, to reduce the temperature. So our body is having some mechanism to release the heat energy, okay. Uh, so always we will last to drink more water. Uh, so we, to regulate your body system, okay. As well, uh, then you have a car, okay, car, wind turbines, okay, food, food processing. Something that you are eating. Okay, nanti kita akan tengok some example. Food processing. Ah, So, food processing, you are taking energy. Okay, makanan dipanaskan. So, you take in the energy. So, energy is converted. Uh, you will have a chemical reaction in your body and the energy is absorbed. Okay, so it can be related to thermal fluid. And the piping work in the industry. Uh, kalau biasa dengan industri, so you can always see a lot of piping inside, okay? Because uh, it's a very big, big uh, skill. Okay, so some of the pictures, okay, related to thermal fluid science. Okay, so we will see as, uh, briefly what are the all three uh, branches. So tadi kita tengok ada tiga branch: thermodynamic, heat transfer, and fluid mechanics. So we will see a little bit. Okay, this subject. We will study in detail about all the three uh, branches of thermal fluid science. Okay, in the upcoming chapters. But for the introduction, kita tengok sikit. So we see a bit. Okay, what are the things? Okay, so thermodynamics. So thermodynamics is actually the science of energy. Okay, so you have an energy. Uh, so anything related to that energy, kita panggil as thermal, thermodynamics. Okay, people always uh, confused between thermodynamic and heat transfer. It's about the other perkataan thermo. So we, our our idea is if your thermo means uh, something to, to do with uh, temperature. So it's not like that. Okay, thermodynamics meaning uh, the science of energy. Uh, so anything related to uh, energy. 
Okay, so energy is the ab ability to cause change, uh, like pushing, pulling. So there's a for uh, uh, conservation of energy. So from one one energy to another energy. Dari apa? Tenaga keupayaan ke tenaga kinetik. So if in Malay. So in English, kinetic energy to potential energy. Uh, so if there's uh, any changes, that anything that causes changes, so energy is related. Okay, the name thermodynamics coming from a Greek word. Okay, dari perkataan Yunani. Okay, so uh, Greek word. Okay, meaning term, meaning it. Okay, so it and dunami. Okay, dynamics, dynamics, dunamis, meaning power. Okay, so you combine this. Uh, so kalau combine, dia jadi it power. Uh, so betul lah, it power. Okay, so heat energy. Heat energy, the sciences related to heat energy. Okay. Okay, one of the most fundamental laws of uh, nature is the conservation of energy principle. So in your daily life, whether you like or don't like, you cannot avoid from the conservation of energy. Okay, conservation of energy meaning, I. so during an interaction, so meaning that when there's a contact or when there's a interaction, energy can change from one form to another form. Uh, tapi jumlah uh, energy yang yang terlibat adalah sama. Okay, it's a, it's a remain constant. So meaning, uh, boleh tengok dekat example ni. Okay, there's a rock at the cliff. Okay, a rock falling from the cliff. Okay, so uh, kalau dia tak bergerak, uh, so there's a potential energy of 10 unit. Okay, so energy 10 joule. Okay, kinetic energy dekat sini adalah kosong because it's not moving. Uh, okay, so zero, potential energy is 10. But when uh, the, the rock started to fall from the cliff, uh, so tenaga keupayaan or the potential energy will start to reduce. Okay, from 10 become uh, 7. Okay, so the total energy here is 10 unit. Okay, 10 tolak kosong, 10. Uh, but as it start to move, okay, start to fall, uh, potential energy will be reduced and the energy will be converted, start to convert to kinetic energy. Uh, so if you see here 10 units total, here also 10 units, 7 plus 3. Uh, it can increase. It won't increase or decrease. It will be remain the same, just the energy is converted from one form to another form. So that is what we call as conservation of energy principle. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu cakap apa? Okay, conservation of energy principle. Siapa tahu? Anyone? Tak ada orang? Okay, so I pun dah lama tak baca. Okay, in uh, bahasa. Okay, so the energy, the thing is, energy will change from one form to another form. Uh, so total amount remain constant. Uh, so that's why they are saying energy cannot be created or destroyed. Okay, so this is uh, conservation of energy principle. So which is very important in this subject. So you need to understand this. Okay, so uh, okay, the the first use or uh, use of thermodynamic, perkataan thermodynamic, the word of thermodynamic is taken from William Thomson ataupun uh, Lord K Kelvin, okay, in 1824, okay, in his book uh, yang di publish 1849. Okay, so you can see here, yeah, the conservation of energy principle also the backbone of the diet industry. Okay, hari ini kita cakap diet, diet, diet kan? So we are always saying, talking about diet. Okay, if a person has a greater input, Nah, maksudnya you makan, your food, your drink, you always eat fast food. Uh, so meaning the energy or the calories will be a lot. Okay, so let's say you are taking 5 units of calories so, but through your food. Okay, uh, then you do a bit of exercise. Uh, buat exercise and also your pencernaan, all the thing. 
okay and your metabolism in the body uh, is causing the energy output so let's say you're taking five units of energy and you're releasing four units of energy so balance adalah lima tolak empat so one unit is stored as your fat uh, sebab tu kita always uh, cakap oh I, I eating okay there this much but I also do exercise but why I'm not losing weight because uh, equation dia tak uh, because of the conservation of energy uh, so you're taking in five unit uh, so if you are releasing uh, or the energy out is six unit uh, then your body will burn fat uh, so larinya uh, we always assume I do exercise I will lose weight no so you need to play around with this okay that's why diet industry you have a dietitian in the hospital so they will advise you how you can uh, reduce weight or how you can uh, maximize your uh, energy uh, so in order to lose weight okay so if you are taking in more and you are releasing less so the remaining energy will be stored in your body okay so that's why uh, they are can store as a tissue and fat okay so and a person with a smaller energy input than output will lose weight uh, so let's say here you are taking four and energy out is five and uh, then the energy will be coming out uh, will burn from your fat okay so I uh, try to play around with your energy okay in order for you to lose weight Okay, the change of energy content of the body and other system is equal in the different different. Okay, so other satu term. So there's a term called energy balance. Uh, energy balance. So meaning uh, energy uh, input minus energy output. That's the changes of the energy. Atau energy balance. So this is the energy balance. Uh, so yang you uh, entering minus uh, going out. Okay. So there are two thermodynamics law that we always will deal. Okay, the first thermodynamic law, kita uh, tengok tadi, the law of conservation of energy. So energy can be transformed from one form to another, but it can be created or destroyed. Okay, so the total amount of energy in the matters in the universe remain constant. Uh, so maksudnya dalam dunia ni, so under the uh, it can be in the outer space or in our uh, boomy, boomy. So the total amount of energy uh, to one that create uh, constant. So meaning it's only uh, changing from one form to another form. So it's not coming uh, new or it's not coming uh, or destroyed. Okay, so you need to understand this. Okay, it's only changing from one point to another form. Uh, so that is the uh, first uh, law of thermodynamics. So dalam, uh, kalau dalam exam, if in the exam I ask you, so I explain or define first law of thermodynamics. So you can explain now all these things. Okay. Uh, then you can draw this uh, this uh, example or other example uh, to explain this. Okay. Soalan-soalan yang biasa keluar lah, to explain. Explain what is first law of thermodynamics, what is second law of thermodynamics. Okay. So, uh, this subject is a theory subject. So, mostly theory subject. So, you need to explain a lot. Uh, because we will try to test your understanding. Okay, so the state of entropy of the entire universe. Okay, changes in the energy. Okay, of an isolated system will always increase over time. Okay, so by itself. Okay, to one, to one the create the universe will always expand they uh, can expand so by two so now you have uh, this uh, new uh, telescope okay uh, web 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 the telescope so you can see the universe is uh, very big okay so to one create so it keep on expanding okay so it will the state of entropy or the energy will always increase over time so it cannot be created or destroyed but it is increasing by itself okay by itself because of some reactions okay the second law also states that 
the changes of entropy in the universe can never be negative. So meaning the energy in the universe, W abyss, cannot be negative or zero. Cannot. Uh, so it will always increase over time by itself, by the, by nature. Uh, because uh, to one, to one uh, uh, create in such way. Okay, that it keep on expand. Okay, the actual processes occurs in the direction of decreasing of quality of energy. So, uh, so you will see uh, one example. Apa tu? Because sini dia bagi tau. So, it always decreasing quality of energy. So, what is that? Okay, so you can see an example. Uh, so, you are the hot coffee. Pagi-pagi, you bancho, you na minum. So, hot coffee, so normally, you it will be in, in hot state. We got the kind 70 degrees. So, let's say it's a 70 degrees. So, you have a cool environment. You do do the light icon. So, 20 degrees Celsius. So, normal room temperature, maybe around 30. Okay, in Perlis, will be a bit slightly uh, more. Okay. Uh, so, normally, if you are in an environment, uh, so, after some time, so let's say you didn't drink, you just kept your cup there. After some time, the, this temperature from 70 will become 60, 50, 40, until it becomes 20. After 20, it will not uh, decrease because your environment minimum 20. Uh, so, what it is saying, the direction of decreasing of quality of energy, meaning, uh, dari tinggi, dia akan jadi kerendah. Uh, so from from high temperature it will go to low temperature but from 20 degrees celsius it cannot automatically increase to 70 degrees uh, kalau you eat up that's different case because you are giving more energy uh, but by nature by itself so so what the guys need to check up so never get out by itself so you cannot from 20 degrees celsius increase to 70 degrees celsius by itself uh, so uh, it's not possible, but from 70 to 20 is possible because it fulfills the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, so it uh, the energy move from decreasing quality of energy. Uh, so that, that is an example of second law of thermodynamics. Okay, so although the principle of thermodynamics have been existent since the creation of the universe. So meaning, without knowing or not knowing, orang-orang purba, so the primitive in the earlier times, they already doing thermodynamics. They already applying thermodynamics without their knowing. But uh, it only start to become an application and people start to study. Uh, so orang mula belajar as a new science. So development of new science pada tahun uh, 1697 oh, uh, and uh, also uh, 1697 is used uh, in an atmospheric steam engine uh, so you always think of the cerita Harry Potter uh, so this kind of uh, train so those time my time still, still uh, this train is available but I think maybe your time you can't really see this kind of uh, we already came, came, uh, came to an electric train okay uh, or the other other types of uh, any so here you are using a charcoal okay charcoal you heat up and then uh, the steam will be produced and the steam will be used to move the piston inside your steam engine okay this steam engine is created in 1697 okay by uh, thomas savery and also other application by thomas newcomen Okay, in 1712, so it's almost like uh, 300 to 400 years back. Okay, so even though the uh, engines are very slow and inefficient, uh, but people start to study the new science. Uh, so that's when the engineering side came lah, dalam, uh, dalam thermodynamics. Okay, the first and second laws of thermodynamic emerge. Uh, so I need some 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 assign, uh, some history. Okay, so you always uh, know the Rankine scale. Okay, to measure temperature, then you have a Celsius. Okay, and also Kelvin. 
Okay, so all these are some of the terms that we always use to measure uh, temperature. Okay, all coming from their work. Okay, so boleh boleh baca lah dekat sini. I'm not really going into this. Okay, and also they came up with a larger number of particles called molecules. Okay, so when you are dealing with the heat energy, so inside if you use microscope and you check, so there's a molecules inside. Uh, so which we can't see with our naked eyes. Okay, so uh, the science of uh, thermodynamic. Okay, the science of thermodynamic can be divided into two approach. Uh, dua kaida. Dua kaida yang digunakan. Two approaches that use, okay, in the thermodynamics investigation, uh, meaning the, the experiment. So one way we call it as a macroscopic approach. The okay, macroscopic approach meaning a study of thermodynamics that does not require the knowledge of behavioral or behavioral study of individual particle. So meaning uh, you tak kisah sangat pasal molecule yang apa yang molecule tu buat molecule ni bergerak pergerakan molecule so the movement of the molecule so you are not really uh, concern, uh, have concern. So macro macro maksudnya besar. So you are seeing uh, the thermodynamic from the bigger scale. You're just seeing the things are moving. Okay, so uh, kalau water heater. So water heater, so I give an example of water heater. So dalam water heater, so in the water heater, so there's a, a movement of molecule. So when you're heating up the molecule, it started to move and the water become, uh, become hot. Okay. But in our application side, we don't uh, we take how much uh, the amount of energy is uh, released, so how much uh, the molecule is heated up, how much energy is going in, coming out. Uh, we are not concerned about that. So we just want we, we take, uh, you take on the switch, you press the switch, the hot water is coming out or the cold water is coming out. So we only uh, considering about that. Uh, so if that is uh, your your concern, so that means you are doing the experiment in the microscopic approach. Uh, microscopic approach, you are not uh, concerned about what the individual particles inside are doing. Okay, so let's take on such an example like this. So okay, so gas pressure of gas in a container. So you want to measure pressure of gas in a container, okay? So inside there must be a molecule movement, okay? Uh, so but you just want to measure the pressure, uh, pressure of the container. So you just attach a pressure gauge, okay? To tolo tekanan, okay? Something that measures the pressure into the system. So you already can measure how much pressure is inside the uh, container. So you don't really care about what uh, what the molecules are doing. Okay, so that's what we call as a macroscopic. Okay, there's another way. Okay, macroscopic also is called as classical thermodynamic. Okay, so it's another name. Macroscopic approach ataupun classical thermodynamic approach. Okay, there's another way. We uh, call it as a statistical thermodynamic. So, yang ni classical. So yang ni adalah statistical thermodynamic. So statistical thermodynamic is actually microscopic, uh, microscope, uh, microscope something yang kita nak tengok kecil kan, micro, micro means small, macro means big. Uh, microscopic means you are concerned about what the individual particles inside are doing. Uh, so tadi, uh, you, for this application, you just measuring the pressure, so you just add a pressure gauge. But in microscopy, you are dealing, you are checking what the, uh, how much energy is entering, how much energy is leaving. So uh, how is the movement of the particles inside? Uh, that means it's a statistical thermodynamic or microscopic approach. Okay, so in pun soalan favorite dalam exam. So compare microscopic and macroscopic approach. Uh, so if, uh, if I ask that kind of question, so I, I hope you can answer.
Okay, so that's uh, the first branch of uh, thermal fluid science. Okay, so we are entering to the second one, heat transfer. Okay, heat transfer. Okay, so the transferring of heat. So the energy transfer is always from the higher temperature to a lower temperature. Okay, any uh, based on the natural way. Okay, so uh, like I, I was, the cup of coffee earlier. Okay. Yeah, it cannot. It will decrease from high temperature to low temperature, but it cannot go from low temperature to high temperature by itself. You can let it in a microwave, or you can heat up. Uh, then only it can increase. Okay, and then uh, the energy transfer stops when uh, the two mediums, so meaning high and low, uh, it reach a same temperature. Much at that Okay, I show you. Uh, so here the cold environment is 20 so the if you leave this hot coffee for let's say three hours or four hours it will reduce 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 until it become 20 after 20 it cannot reduce to 19 or 15 by itself it's not possible because minimum point already 20 okay that's what it's saying so when it reaches the same temperature with the other environment uh, it, it is said to reach the thermal equilibrium. The okay, thermal equilibrium meaning kesamaan uh, temperature. Okay, kesamaan temperature. Okay, the thermal temperature same. Okay, so what is heat above a form of energy? So heat is an energy. Okay, that can be transferred from one system to another system as the result of temperature difference. Okay, for heat. So must f temperature different. Uh, kalau dia tak ada temperature different, we consider that as a work. Okay, kerja. Okay, so if there's uh, something related to temperature different, macam uh, 70 to 20, tadi kan kita tengok. So there's a temperature different of 50 in between. Uh, meaning energy can be transferred as a heat energy. Okay, so heat transfer, the science that deals with determination of the rate of such energy transfer and the variation of temperature. Uh, so the condition of heat transfer, then the temperature different. Okay, non-equilibrium, meaning temperature ta sama. Okay, uh, that's the condition of heat transfer. If temperature sama, heat transfer will not happen. Okay, so that's something that you need to understand. Okay, so uh, heat transfer is something to deal with rate. Okay, dalam satu masa, in one minute, how much heat energy is transferred? That is what we call as the heat transfer. Uh, so the rate, rate maksudnya kadar. Kadar, uh, kadar perubahan tenaga. Atau kadar pemindahan tenaga. So the rate of energy transfer. Okay, so rate always uh, something to do with uh, massa. Okay, in one second or one minute, in one hour. Uh, how much energy is transferred? That is what we call as heat transfer. Okay, that's another term, thermodynamic, yang kita tengok tadi. The thermodynamic is not concerned with the rate. It's concerned with the amount. Berapa jumlah energy yang transfer. So that's the difference between heat transfer and thermodynamics. So heat transfer, uh, kadar, berkaitan dengan kadar or rates. Thermodynamics is dealing with the amount. Amount of heat transfer. Uh, so amount, so dia tak kisah berapa banyak. Uh, from one uh, one state to another state. Okay, so tadi dalam uh, dari 70 ke 20 degree Celsius. Uh, so if it transfer, uh, it always deal with uh, in one second how much energy is transferred. But thermodynamic, uh, how much energy is transferred uh, from 70 to uh, uh, 20 degrees. Berapa banyak joule. Okay, so it's not concerned about how long. Uh, it, you can take hours, you can take uh, days for it to transfer, but thermodynamic is dealing with the amount. Okay, but dalam engineering, so in kejurutraan, so dalam kejurutraan, uh, we always interested about the rate of e transfer. Okay, uh, so uh, the e transfer is very important because you you are trying to propose a solution. Uh, so macam e, uh, so katakan uh, you only dealing with thermodynamic okay dalam e, uh, water heater uh, so water heater kita nak uh, 
kita kita nak water tu uh, air tu untuk uh, jadi panas dengan cepat so you cannot go to your bathroom uh, oh I don't want to deal with it transfer I only want to deal with thermodynamic so you tekan switch you tunggu satu hari uh, dekat bilik air so uh, air tak panas-panas uh, so it's not so when we are dealing with engineering we want the heat transfer to happen at a faster rate uh, so in engineering heat transfer is a uh, concern okay so you boleh baca lah sikit uh, i just uh, talk about what is uh, highlighted in the yellow okay so in in practice we are more concerned about the rate of heat transfer as i how i said earlier okay okay Determ uh, determining the rate of heat transfer uh, to or from a system and thus the times of cooling and heating as well as variation of temperature uh, ini adalah definition uh, heat transfer okay so it's all are uh, dealing with heat transfer okay so the basic requirement as i say you must have a temperature different so temperature difference is the driving force of heat transfer uh, so if the gradient is big so the temperature gradient um, tadi kita tengok, uh, earlier we saw 70 degrees to 20 degrees. So, the gradient is 50 degrees. 70 tolak 20. Uh, if the gradient is bigger and bigger, the rate of heat transfer will be higher. So, katakan, uh, so if the hot coffee is under degree Celsius and you want to reduce to 20 degrees, so the temperature gradient is 80 degrees. Uh, so, meaning for for 80 uh, for 80 degrees of uh, temperature gradient the rate will be faster than 50 degrees temperature gradient uh, lagi dekat uh, so let's say it's uh, 30 degrees hot coffee you now reduce to 20 uh, so the gradient is 10 degrees celsius per bazaar uh, so meaning the rate uh, rate of heat transfer uh, will be lesser dia akan jadi a bit lambat uh, so Lagi tinggi, the temperature gradient, lagi uh, lagi besar the rate, ha, kadar perubahan antara pemindahan apa. So that's what uh, is uh, saying. Okay, so that's uh, another thing. Okay, we, are, uh, we will see another one. Okay, the third branch of uh, thermo, thermo fluid science, uh, we call it as uh, fluid mechanics. Okay, fluid mechanics. So the science that deals with behavior of fluid at rest, okay, kita panggil as static fluid. So we will study on this uh, in chapter 3, uh, 2 and 3 and also thermodynamics, uh, sorry, fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics is uh, the fluid uh, in motion, okay, and the interaction between fluid. Okay, fluid, we always have a misconception. Okay, kita selalu uh, fikir, oh, fluid means something yang uh, air adalah fluid, gas is not fluid. So fluid is actually, it can be in a liquid or gas phase, tak kisah. Uh, so it can be in uh, either liquid, macam macam air, or it can be a gas. Uh, so dua-dua ni adalah fluid. So both are fluids. Okay, so fluid mechanics, so can be a lot hydrodynamics. So meaning water yang, uh, so hydro means water, dynamics meaning in motion. Okay, so study of motion uh, yeah, in a liquid. Okay, in a liquid. Then you have a gas dynamics, so gas yang moving. Okay, gas yang moving at the highest speed, okay, through a nozzle or whatever. Then you have aerodynamic, the term aerodynamics. Okay, meaning the flow of gases over a, a physical body. Uh, macam car or aircraft or rocket okay so all that are related to fluid then uh, so all, all this can be very general and uh, naturally occurring flows macam air terjun air sungai uh, laut okay all the rivers okay or ocean uh, so all that are uh, having a separate term meteorology meteorology you always hear that so the apa uh, cuaca so we are checking the climate so meteorology oceanography uh, so uh, dekat laut 
okay hydrology so dekat uh, empangan ke apa okay so in the uh, dam okay so that is uh, related to fluid dynamics so i think uh, today we have seen uh, very basic concepts of uh, thermal fluid science okay some definitions that involve in the thermal fluid science so basically the other tiga cabang so three branches okay so first we saw apa yang kita tengok tadi Dynamics, okay, thermodynamics, uh, this is first branch, okay, then uh, we uh, saw heat transfer, the second branch, and the third one is the fluid mechanics. Okay, all three combined, uh, uh, that's what we will study in this chapter. Okay, we will have another eight chapters uh, remaining. All the eight chapters will be divided into three, all these three cabang, the three branches. Okay, thermodynamics, kita akan belajar sikit, we will study a bit. Uh, Eat transfer, we will study a bit. And uh, fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics, uh, it covers around three to four chapters because you need to study uh, static fluid and also dynamic fluid. Uh, so we have a few chapters that covering that. Okay. Okay, so another things that are uh, very important in this subject is the uh, dimensions. So dimensions or units, okay. So any uh, something yang you dah belajar dalam fizik dulu. Okay, you already studied this in physics, okay. Uh, when you are dealing with uh, anything, any calculation, because you you have seen earlier uh, whether you are calculating the amount of the energy or you are calculating the rate of energy. So it can be anything to do with the uh, temperature or whatever. We all all of that are dealing with dimension. Okay, dimension uh, meaning the units lah, units so uh, so dimension macam ni, the dimension like length, mass, time, and units. All these dimension have its particular unit. Okay, so uh, knowing the importance of the dynamics and units are very important for this subject. Okay, so any physical quantity can be categorized by dimension. Okay, and uh, each dimension are uh, assigned to a unit. Okay, it can be meter, it can be kilometer, okay. So you always have a primary or fundamental dimension uh, that you cannot derive from other units. And you also have a derived dimension, okay. So derived dimensions that you can, like com combination of uh, velocity of energy uh, and energy, uh, then you derive something new. So that is what we call as a der uh, derivation. Okay, and normally we are we in engineering in Malaysia, we will deal with metric SI system, ataupun SI unit. Okay, we are call it always call it as a SI unit. SI unit is a globally accepted uh, unit. Uh, okay, a simple and logical system based on the decimal relationship between the units. So normally we will call uh, we will measure in meters, seconds, okay, all the other other stuff lah. Okay, how uh, we call consider as a SI unit. Okay, so you can see here yeah, some of the SI unit. On the length is a meter, so mass is a kilogram, time is a second, temperature is Kelvin. So we always use, even though we are always using Celsius, but the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. So electrical current, ampere, amount of light is candela, so amount of matter is mole. Okay, and there's another system called English system. Uh, so normally the metric system will come from the Americans. Uh, they are they are the one who will be initiating. Uh, orang British always are the ego. They don't want to use the American system. They want to come up with their own system. Uh, so then uh, you have a English system or British British system. Okay, uh, you always heard about this feet, pounds, uh, all the other stuff lah. Uh, a bit like complicated also la, to, to, to say uh, but uh, English people always like to complicate stuff I also don't know why uh, but their, their way is like that so you go to England you need to use their system uh, so they, they, they have pride in that la. okay so some of SI and English units okay so you can see here for SI so normally for this subject you will deal with force mass and also weight uh, 
So uh, selalunya uh, K force we always uh, Newton. Okay, mass uh, normally will be kilogram. Uh, distance will be meter, and time is second. Uh, weight, weight also uh, is a okay mass. Uh, later we will see what is the difference between mass and weight. So there's uh, some difference lah. Okay, in English they call it uh, uh, as a libra. Uh, so lbm. So you think uh, or we always call it as a pound. Okay, so it's a bit like complicated. So uh, the one good thing is for our syllabus, I won't ask you to convert from SI unit to English unit. That's a, your normal physics you study in school. Here we will not use a British system. We always uh, stick to a SI system. So I so I won't really focus on this lah. Okay, for for force, for force, uh, we uh, get it from. Uh, Newton's second law. Okay, F equals to MA. Okay, so I think you still remember this. Force equals to mass time acceleration. Okay, F equals to MA. Uh, so, uh, force, one Newton of force is actually uh, how, how much uh, how fast uh, how much acceleration is required uh, to move one kg from one point to another point. Okay, so one newton normally requires one meter per second square to move one kilogram of mass. Okay, that is what we call as a uh, F equals to MA. So that's how it's related. So mass is the property of body of fluid that is a measure of its inertia or the resistance of the change of motion. Uh, so mass. So they are the dual term, mass and also weight. We always have a misconception. Like sebab kita dalam daily life, we use weight for our body weight, body mass. Uh, so body mass and body weight are two different things. Okay. So mass is actually the resistance uh, to the change of motion. Mass always we, uh, we calculate in kilogram. Uh, so body weight pun kita timbang kita measure dalam kilogram. So it's actually body mass. Okay, weight is uh, something that uh, based on the gravity. Uh, so the bumi, your gravity will be different. Uh, so 9.81. Uh, atas bukit maybe a slightly different but negligible. But in moon it will be different. Uh, so weight will be different uh, differs based on the gravitation. Okay, so for weight, it's now more F equals to mg. Uh, it will become uh, W weight equals to mass times weight gravity. Okay, gravity. Okay, and you have a term, uh, yang ni semua kita akan belajar in, in the other chapters lah. So I'm not really focusing on this. Okay, that's an interesting thing here. Uh, oh, okay, so I think I have uh, two more minutes. Okay, I'll try to finish it. On the surface of moon, the astronaut weigh about one sixth of the uh, weight that they normally have. Uh, so, kalau dekat bulan, you timbang dekat bulan, so let's say in bumi, your your weight, uh, weight uh, your your mass is 60 kilograms. Okay? But in, in moon, your weight will be only 10 kilograms. Okay? So, for those uh, so uh, you have a good news lah. Uh, so if you if you are trying to lose weight and your weight is not lo losing, so the fastest way of you losing weight you shift to moon. Okay, you go to moon automatically your weight will, your mass will become ten kg or one over six. Okay, so that, that's how that's how you are doing here. You can see the picture here. So the person is. Me uh, measuring the mass in the uh, in the outer space. Okay, so I think it's already nine o'clock. So I will stop here. Just few more slides to go. Uh, maybe I will cover that uh, in our two hours lecture next week. Okay, but uh, what I want to say. So as an engineer, as a mechatronic engineer, try to remove the misconception about mass and weight. 
Okay, kalau ada orang orang yang biasa atau your parents or your brothers are saying wait, 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 so you need to go and correct them. It's not actually wait, it's a mess. Okay, wait is something. Uh, maybe the kabumi mess and uh, wait dia nampak macam lebih kurang uh, because of the gravitational force uh, always equal, uh, but it's actually it's mess. Mess even the card bulan your mass will not change. 60 kg, your body weight is still, uh, body mass is still 60 kg, but when you measure, it shows 10 kg because of the gravitational force. Okay, so I think 9 o'clock, so I will stop here. Uh, so we will continue the remaining five slides in the next uh, lecture. Okay, so any question before we finish? No, okay, so if no questions, so we will stop here. So later I will upload this lecture video.